Uh, hey, you, I you would... know what? I you know the one thing I am curious about, um, Rafa. I mean, I can you explain the 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 framing of this the the show a little bit? Um. Yeah, I would say that that's a good way to start. Um. So I think I think the show started um, through conversations um, about the kind of like artistic sustainability of Miami and the, the, the cultural institutional landscape of Miami. And, and I feel like even though I was born in Cuba, um, I always feel like Miami's home. So I think a lot of what I do in relationship to Miami is to give back as much as possible into um, sort of relationships between people and places that can sustain a long conversation that eventually may or may not spark on a project or, or some sort of um, situation, but at least there's an ongoing dialogue uh, between locals and outsiders and and both artists realm and institutional realm and when the conversation started with Ulight, the question was how do we do a show that kind of uses that as a foundation to pair artists that may or may not exchange the same space uh at a certain moment or even in their lifetime. And, and uh, that was the beginning of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we had a meeting at Ulight and we decided to then also extend the invitation to a curator mm -hmm. uh, that in this case was Sally mm -hmm. uh, to then, so she could modulate and kind of be um, the middle point between all the artists and, and develop a show that was not oriented towards a one very specific thing, but it could develop or spark, again, multiple avenues uh, and find a common thread among many artists. And uh, so that was like the beginning of it. And, and then the, the other question was, well, we have a very small space and and it can accommodate that many artists right and uh, i think that at that time we were walking through space and we were waiting in the common room that they have and we had the idea that if it is a building that functions mostly as studios uh as a production site rather than an exhibition site mm -hmm. uh why not to incorporate that a little bit into how the show was deployed across a building. And then we made the decision to occupy not just the gallery space, but the two adjacent rooms, meaning a studio, uh, and then the common, the common room and library slash library. And that was the beginning of, of the exhibition a couple of years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, because this exhibition was delayed because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. Then and like, I, I thought that, I thought that, I thought that COVID actually did help the show. It didn't really went against it. It allowed the show to develop more and to grow and to solidify a lot more. Uh, Conceptually, you think you thought maybe yeah. time sort of gave that a larger um, optic into a longer optic. Yeah, conceptually, and also, well, the other the other conversation that came about it, especially with that sort of long term was, okay, so then whoever is making you work, the institution would commission the work. Yeah. Uh, so that was great in the sense that it financially support um, some of the artists going through COVID. Um, but and, was that, uh, was that the, uh, also part of the uh, real half of the, uh, the, the show intention it was to support um, local artists yes with fun, with productions and all that yeah stuff. the when the show the when the idea of the show started there was one specific guideline to follow which 
the show had to be a hybridity of two groups. One of alumni from the mm -hmm. school lights or former South Florida Art mm -hmm. Center, and then half of people that were invited or guests right. um, because they have a they have a great a great um, program which is to support the local local artists in Miami and um, and I think that wait give me a second maybe I'm, I'm I gotta move I gotta migrate okay here it is. Hey. Uh, so basically, um, hey, go into the bathroom. So maybe I'll go into the bathroom. So we're all in the bathroom together. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, so so the the institution has the program is driven by supporting financially and physically. Uh, providing studios to local artists, and it has been there for many, many years. And although it has shifted a little bit, in my view, um, that's the main goal. So they're um, they ask for a mixture of artists, uh, also to again um, sort of develop this larger conversation around right. people's work and contextualize it in a different manner, right. and. Uh, so that was the only that was the only request from them, right? Uh, and and did, did you did you and uh, um, did Sal? Do you think Sally did did fulfill the that the requirements in terms of bridge, making that bridge between the uh, outside inside kind of ideas? Yeah, I think so. I think I think that she was able to find uh, interesting threads that connected. Uh, all the artists across mm -hmm. the space and the way that the work was placed also allowed for a fluidity between artist to artist, room to room, idea to idea. So I think, um, you know, I, I think that in that regard, um, she did a great job. Yeah. So, well, aside from, 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 from the kind of, uh, when I was there at, at the opening, um, each room had its own moment, right? I mean, I, I really did enjoy walking through, starting out with even entering into the space, walking into to see Ritrick's uh, um, wall piece. I mean, behind the glass. Um, what, what's the name? I forgot the name of the, the works, but oh, we'll, we'll put that in there. Yeah. Um, the you know, that sort of set, like that. yeah, that sort of set the, t the tone for the show, right? I mean, it did. The funny thing is like when you and Sally were talking about earlier version of it, where you were talking about uh, warping the text and introduction text and warping it through this, the, 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 the wall, the entrance wall. I thought that was the brilliant idea. And what happened to that idea? I don't know. Jeez. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. You move through ideas and then, uh, you you figure out what can and can be done, and and I think that, and I think that at a certain degree, I I guess she figure out how to minimize the use of space. I mean, the show, I think the show has a lot of work, and and it too much or too uh, too much. When no, you no, say no, too, not a too lot much. Of work. It has it has a large amount of work, but it's it's like well placed in a way that you don't feel that you know it's, it's overcrowded uh, overcrowded so i think mm -hmm. that i think that uh, maybe at a certain degree the text was not needed to create such a such an element oh you know? but uh, yeah i yeah perhaps i'm i'm going down the the wrong path but i was interested in that idea of the the, the text because it does because your work also has the text right above it in, in your space, right? Now, I, I thought maybe that was the common bridge, text to text, as an introduction into the whole landscape and walking through the scroll of brick, brick and all that stuff too with text and all that stuff. So uh, maybe I, yeah. that's where I was going. Yeah, I think I think what, what's interesting about the show at a first level is that 
you enter the building and the building, the structure of the building fulfills some sort of um, um, uh, way of directing into, you enter through a room and then you walk through three completely or four completely different rooms that yeah. have works that may or may not share ideas, but mm -hmm. the way that they're holding the space makes it almost like a film, right? You enter through one end, you mm -hmm. go through it. One is very, one, the room you're in is very graphic, uh, graphically driven. Uh, mm -hmm. So then you enter the room where Sarah and Paloma are, and it's, it's more poetic mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a spatial way. And then you enter uh, Giovanna's room and it's, it's dark, it's, you know, it has a video, it's this sort of disorienting element. And then you enter the room where I'm at and Paloma has a piece in the, in the bookshelf. And then that you don't, you don't even consider it at a certain degree part of the show because it's, it's a regular room, it's a library, people come and make coffee. Um, yeah. So what's interesting is that the works are allowing spaces to naturally develop mm -hmm. uh, its own identity and it, its own mechanisms. And, and it, it becomes almost like ecosystems within, within one place. Right. And, I, and I thought that that was interesting, especially because when you, know, you go to your room, I always feel like your work is about ecosystems. And, you know, it, it's about this sort of narrative that you develop, this like vectorial narrative that takes you on a path about volume of layers and, and graphics and, and, and sort of printing process. And, and in a weird way, the notion of ecosystem runs through the show from pieces to rooms to the entire installation. And I, and I think that's an interesting, that's an interesting way of thinking. Yeah. So then let's stay with your room for a second, because, you know, I, I find that room, yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's your color palette, right? I mean, and the light, the way the warm light just, it did, I mean, the first thing you want to do is interact with the, the, the couch that is sitting there. But what is not, I mean, I find to be the most interesting thing is that the that right around the corner, the way you set up a a, a system of, of 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 building right with with language and and images, and it's given to the the public. But I wonder if how many people interact with that because it's uh you're very generous with your the way you say well everyone anyone can be an artist anyone can interact with this and make it make one of your own. And then give something back, um, but I the, at the show I there were only a few people who interact with it. You think that because they are uncertain about the the proposition that you've set up? Yeah, um, I mean, I think I think that um, uh, how do you make a work that ask for a certain interaction without being just uh, prescribing? or without, without prescribing or being prescriptive in a way that indicates people to, to, to do something. I think I wanted, I wanted this notion of a part of the, the piece that you make a book for someone else um, while taking someone else's. I think that what I wanted it to be more obscure in the sense of like traditionally you go into a, a, a exhibition setting and you know there's a, a power set power dynamic and a separation between between you and an artwork, and and there's if there's no a signage that says you can touch or someone that tells you you can touch it, then it's a it's a, a bit more confusing, and but I wanted that I wanted that to run in the sense that if you see someone for whatever reason you see someone doing it, mm -hmm. and you feel that you can do it, then you get to share that moment. And if not, you just miss it and it's still totally fine. You know, you just go buy it and, you know, you look at it. But because I think at the end, the entire piece was, uh, it, it originated in thinking about an artwork and trajectories and the text that's in the in top and bottom are very snippet fragments of conversations I've had to have with people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, 
the couch was existing there. So it was nice to place it back into the piece so people could see it uh -huh. set on the couch next to a light that is occupying the couch too. Um, uh -huh. And the light is a book. So it has this weird, you know, it's, it's almost like, again, the, the, the notion of putting that space to make a book without giving instructions is when you encounter, and it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that I've, I've, I've had before, when you go to a library and there are moments in the library where you're not certain where, whether you can, take, you can take that book or not. I am yeah. the kind of person that goes for it. So I'm transgressive in that way. Um, so in a way, I, I'm hoping that people can transgress that moment. And, yeah. and some did, and some did, and some didn't. And, but I think, that, I think that for me, I don't, I don't think in, I don't think in quantitative results. I don't, I don't think in like good or bad or, or, you know, right. so one or three for me, the fact that it's exists and it, it's a possibility, it's already what it's supposed to be. Right. And, right. Right. Yeah. No, I listen. I, yeah. If you put signs everywhere, if you tell people to do something, it could be, it, it would be too literal to that deck. I, I get that part. What your suggestion is a little more poetic and you, you stumble on it you have to have the courage to kind of go in and say what if i do this right i mean yeah what if i take yeah. a chance and, and and being risk at yell you know, that whatever that is that yeah. we do when we're not supposed to do something well um, i think i think that i think that our making is about decisions and 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 so you're putting that ownership onto the viewer then yeah you have to make yeah. that decision if you yeah. want to do something. You have to. If you like if you want it enough, make it. Yeah. So like I, there was like I, there was someone there that did it, and then immediately there's three people but after that did it. Whether someone else has did it after or not, that also adds like an interesting you know fluctuation to the component of how it's used or yeah. engaged with. It's not all the time, and you know may or may not happen. And, and I like that idea. I like that then that kind of exchange is part of the texture of the work. It's in and out and you know, mm -hmm. it's just not constant. It just doesn't have to be constant. Uh, but I think it's nice to be sitting on the couch and see someone through the mesh making a book and, and then yeah. or like the other way around this voyeuristic condition that yeah. the work proposes that it's not just looking at an object but it's looking at people through the object and i think that that's sort of interesting yeah and, and what about the text above is that um the uh, above the screen that were built into this system this ecosystem that you're talking about it can be a sculpture it's a painting it's a place of you know uh it there there is a certain part of privacy but yet if you're it isn't, is it? I mean, you can hear every conversation in there in that way. But I love the way you divide up the space and privatize the space, right? Yeah. But, and then also the irony, it's like it's the absolute best place to do a, 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 a Instagram kind of pictures. Yeah, it's for, it's for- You think for about that when you, when, when you did that with putting the lamp, right? implicating the, the the lamp right onto the couch were you thinking that this is the bed it's you, is that what you you saw no i put the lamp on that side for two reasons one well three reasons one was the first one was like the couch has almost a broken leg on the back of that side so i was like okay someone sits here <laughs> gonna flip all this thing so you know so erase that side of the couch but then in that, in that notion, this, this idea that then the light, the lamp is a foldable book and it has information and it's sitting next to you, you're almost confronted by a book. Then looking at a book, it's no longer an individual activity, but a collective uh, situation, right? Two people sitting or sharing. But, and then at the same time, by placing the light there, sort of it, kills that side of sitting. So if, if two people wants to sit on the couch at the same time, then they're closer together, you know? And, and I think that that's an interesting idea, thinking about today's time where like everywhere you go, there's a sitting killed between two people. Uh, yeah. um, 
you know. So it just started from a functional perspective, then to become a more poetic decision and about you know space as a diagram for personal relationships. And, right. And, and I just wanted to make a piece or or a moment where one object could conduct multiple experiences and could be seen through multiple points of view and and in a way that happens because the object has a backside a side side depending on where you're looking at it but it's not again it's not there's not a front or a back per se it depends on where you're standing in relationship to to it um and it has the 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 warmth of it is because the object is dealing with color palettes that are standardized through, you know, consumption markets and things like that. Yeah. And because of that, you have a relatability to, to, the, to the color and that makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that that was an interesting, an interesting component where like the light enters through the little window, it warms the space, it makes you more susceptible to, to have a conversation because it starts to get orangey, sunset-like uh, kind of feeling. Yeah. And all the yeah. lights are yellow or like yellow, uh, sort of warm light too. So there's like this notion of space that makes you feel comfortable and for whatever yeah. reason, it ended up being like that. Right, yeah. yeah. It's funny because when, when this project was first, you, when you first introduced this project to me, uh, I thought about it, you know, this whole series of, the idea of these paintings. I mean, the whole, for, for me, the proposition was how do, how do you take over this, these windows that you, you pretty much dictate where these paintings were gonna go. And then, you know, I, you know, obviously the front side, there's two sides to this painting, right? Obviously the side that is being seen from the street and then the one from within the interior space. But my focus was really, I was thinking about how do, how do I bring attention? Or what, what am I saying? If you're walking on a street, just on, on, a, on a very pedestrian level, you're not, you don't, you know, you're looking up and you see these, these panels and what is, how does, what is it, how does it communicate? And all I can think about is this, the car culture in Miami, right? It's like, every time I think about Miami, I think about the bright, colors of, 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 of the cars, all the cars there. I mean, all the exotics car. I mean, there's more freaking exotic cars there than anywhere else in the world, I think. But uh, anyway, so for me, I, that was my focus. Even though all of my attention went to the front of the work, I mean, I spent months working on these, these series of paintings, but that was a, that's a very selfish thing. I was using the language that I'm familiar with already. Yeah. My concern was not to communicate except for to, to myself with these paintings, but the back, I was really, it was, you know, I came up with 10 different reasons for, to communicate from, with, to the outsiders, but finally the, the, the car, and so what I did is, you know, using the, the old Porsche, um, 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 how do you call those, the colors chart, yeah. I went to the to auto parts, I mean, a place where they paint cars and I asked for the whole menu. And I got every, one of every colors of the Porsche uh, paints. Yeah, I figured. Well, I yeah, think, I think one when when the, when the project started to happen, um, you know, one of one of the reasons of why um, I thought that you were a key component to the show is, uh, you know, because of I remember when I saw the Dark Side of the Moon series. Mm -hmm. you know this sort of notion of thinking of the other side yeah uh, the side that no one sees and and i thought that it was important in a way that the paintings or these objects would enter space for you in 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 a in a, a different position rather than hanging on a wall and and i think that uh um you know the decision to go and, and use the call the, the car color scheme uh it puts him almost in the realm also of, of billboards rather than paintings yeah uh, looking at it from downstairs because it's a metal structure and you know um but you know i would i would like to know so in this in this process of 
archiving through the surface, through layers of printing and painting, uh, you know, what, what were some of the decisions that went on to deciding uh, how to build up the layers and how to incorporate the positive and negatives of, of stencils and, uh, you know, soil screening onto it. How, 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 do you, how do you start developing that? That's, that's a question to have. Yeah, I mean, well, we're unpacking 20 years worth of imagery, right? I mean, these, all of the, 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 the silk screen that you see on there are these drawings, these mechanical drawings that I've made for over the past 20 years of my life. And I reuse these images, right? Uh, the lines images or the kind of shape images. And I, you know, you, 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 you turn the drawing into a silk screen to reuse this as a drawing tool. And that's the, the embedding the, the kind of code, the language, the, uh, my language into this, this the, into, into, onto the, the, the aluminum panels. I've been working with aluminum panels for a while. And I just thought that this is a perfect opportunity to really uh, amplify the, 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 the aluminum surface. I really, I, I, at first I was gonna, I had uh, some aircraft um, siding of, a, of the plane. Um, uh, I was going to work on those, but then the way you frame those you, the the windows, I figure these um, these paintings, these panels were much more suited for that. Now going back to what you're asking me about uh, the layering and all that stuff, and how do I, how do I build? You know, it's very intuitive. I don't have the big picture in mind when I'm painting. It's just I lay out all the all the paintings. Well, remember there's set, there's fourteen of these panels all together um what we what we were going to do is when i was on the sally she you know we were talking about um seven panels one for each windows but then when but when we were going and i remember when you walk into the studio and you said hey you know um built a structure for it and you in a way you sort of forced them into a much more sculptural kind of system rather than a painting system you know what i mean but you know, but I did like what you said about dark side of the moon. It's it's the backside of a painting no no one ever sees, right? Isn't that ironic? I mean, we've never seen well nowadays. Pretty China just went. I mean, the Chinese went around the moon. They know what the moon looks like, the back of the side, the dark side of the moon. But anyway, I don't want to go off that side yet. Um, yeah. Um, so it, the intuitive side of of making. It's hard to say, well, I do this, do that, and that. I, I, I don't have a way. I, I paint like a painter. I react to something. I'll, I'll put down a layer, then I'll react to that until I get to a point where I can't react anymore. There's no more room for me to move around the paintings. Um, but the, the, the color, um, uh, you know my work's mostly black and monochromatic, very black and white, very graphic and all that stuff. This is the first time where I am introducing these bright color system into the into the into the surface, and that's reacting from because of the backside of the paintings. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think I think what was interesting um, into into the decision to separate the painting and run it on a rail is that it 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 made a painting more of an object yeah. than a painting. Like we don't think about paintings per se as objects. We think about paintings on, on, on regards to surface. Yeah. Uh, but in this, in this case, the fact that it was kind of like lifted uh, from the ground with the metal component, uh, that was the same aluminum that was making the frame that was making the surface. It put it in the realm of billboards that you walked on the street uh, yeah, like you're walking in a street, like in a city like Berlin, where the walls are blasted with paper, layers and layers and layers of paper. So it, it had a, it entered in an interesting conversation about the city and and especially layers in Miami because Miami has this traditional relationship to, uh, you know, to the notions of swamps and swamps as a as a cultural space and in terms of like the the convulsive layers of things that make a very specific outcome. And yeah. I thought that that was like an interesting, 
notion of like adding on layers and layers and layers and layers into when do you end? You know, when do you make the decision to end? You know. Well, uh, it ended when I when when we took when we loaded up in the car. I mean, we the reason why we have um, only five there because I put the other one on and remember it, it was wet still, so I had to pull it. Well, anyway. <laughs> So when does it end? It you know I that is my biggest struggle with making paintings. Uh, I have this compulsive uh, uh, behavior where I can't let something sit. If it goes back, if this painting goes back to my studio, I would then bury it again. Yeah. You know, we're we're talking about 20, 30 layers of information embedded in there, and through with this his, the canon of time, the history of time also. Because thing what I collect twenty years ago. I'm collecting totally different now. So it has that time kind of capsule idea to it too, you know? Yeah. Um, I, but, um, I, I think one of, one of another interesting component of, of how the paintings were in that room. And you could say, you could speak to that a little bit. It's like suddenly in the room, there are paintings or classified as paintings and multiple surfaces. You have paper, you have metal, you have canvas. Uh, and then like the surface where it was applied on completely changed the way we relate to it. And, yeah. you know, in, in, in regard, uh, like I saw people, like for example, when looking at your work, they would stand to a certain distance because yeah. they feel that, you know, I feel like in my head they could see the work better from a certain distance then stuff like the scrolls of record that they will get yeah. very close because paper is very welcoming you know it's like yeah uh, and also you know what i i am really i was really happy to see what a red brick uh, scroll is compared to mine it was like you know we're facing each other in a way and 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 with red brick work you it sort of demand that you go up there and you really start decoding the maps the 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 text that you know and all that stuff. So you're practically six inches from this thing, trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. I mean, and that, I, I think that's, I, I yeah. by the way, I, I really do, I love that piece. And I'm, I was really happy to, to know that finally, because Ritwick and I collaborate so much that finally we have, we're, we're sharing what this one particular space that we're not uh, very unlike what we normally do with Green Go Home, you know? Yeah. No, I thought, you know, I thought that, like, I remember seeing you work for the paintings and, and seeing how much of the physical act it goes into, into the paintings. Yes. And, and I thought that was like a, that was an interesting, was an interesting way to see one at a level that each panel could be individual but it's a collective uh which i think is very much your way of thinking uh and the other that at the same time it, it kind of created really in a, in a strange way created a grid system for the entire room to read from you know uh in a way in a way that you could you could bounce off your your paintings any other work in the show uh and i thought that that level of relationship that goes through your obsession of collecting diagrams and graphic and uh, yeah. ideas around uh you know fabrication and and and, and uh, sort of material fabrication around science like yeah. the fuller and all these people i thought that in a way the way to look at your work or the look at the room through your work was interesting because it sort of provided the framework for all of those things to sort of think about to us at the same time, right? Uh, like whether, you know, you look at Ernesto's work, which is new spring paper, and then, you know, you could immediately think about your work and think about offset lithograph and metal yeah. and graphic exactly. design and, you know, seal screen printing uh, or, or thinking about the scrolls again, you could see the relationship between layers. And I thought that that was like, in a weird way, 
the way that where Sally put the pieces made your work almost like, uh, you know, the backboard of the entire room from one angle. Yeah. And, but in a, in, a, in a way that was supporting all of it at the same time. And, and I thought that was an interesting component that came out of it uh, from looking at, at all this sort of layers yeah. of information that, that's always present in the surface. Yeah, um, yeah, no, actually, you know, I can still, I mean, I know it. the interesting thing is that every room has its moment, right? I mean, I remember walking to the, the video room. It was actually, I love that video sitting in there, you know, by itself, but then that curved wall that comes with it, that dark curved walls, and then it pick up again when we, you go out to pick it to a, for Ritwick scroll, but in between is, the, the Sarah Z, very, 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 I mean, I, I love that room. I mean, I can still remember every object in the room, right? But I, I thought Sally did a great job just moving us through the space, you know? Yeah. Um, so. No, I, th I think, that, yeah, I, I agree. And, and, and I think, you know, what's interesting, like thinking about it now, like after, after talking about it, What's interesting is like your paintings forced people to look at the show from the outside of the building yeah. because there's no other way to look at that back end. You know, you know, there's something yeah. there, but you know, which is again in a weird way ties the way I'm thinking about mesh and see through yeah, and yeah. you know, voyeurism in the city and and all these things. And you know, I I, I thought that was like. Uh, that was like an interesting, an interesting move about how to address that.